Filming by yourself can be a little bit challenging sometimes. I set up a camera over on this side of my table, but then I come back over here and sometimes it can be a struggle to get myself in focus. So I thought, why not use the 3D scanner that I have, scan my face, and then 3D print out a life-size bust. But it got me to thinking, do I really need a $2,000 3D scanner to do this? Or can we get away with using a free app on your phone? Welcome back to the channel, folks. Today, I thought I would put something to the test. We're gonna use the Morocco Plus 3D scanner from RevoPoint and put it head-to-head -head against the Polycam app for your phone. Now, there are a few different versions of Polycam, but the one we're gonna use today is the free version. You can upgrade to the pro version for about $29 a month, and then you have access to a few more features, such as exporting your files as an SDL or an OBJ file. But for the purpose of today's video, we're gonna stick to their free unpaid version. Now, a couple differences that I did wanna point out real quick before we jump over and start scanning is there is no post-processing app within Polycam. You kinda of get what you get. With the scanner itself, we can actually edit our mesh and kind of tweak things a little bit to get more clarity right on the scanner itself. But what my plan is, is to send it over to the computer, use RevoScan 5, and just tweak some of those settings around so we can get the best possible outcome. The only thing I'm gonna do with the Polycam version is I do need to convert it from a GLB file into an OBJ file. So we are gonna use an outside source to do that. But aside from that, I'm not pulling these into Fusion or a Shaper 3D or anything like that to make any tweaks. It's just gonna come either straight from the Revo Point or straight from Polycam. So starting off with the Polycam app, I have a little Bluetooth shutter button. We need this because the auto feature on Polycam only works if you're moving the phone around. It doesn't work if your subject is moving around. So we're gonna go into manual mode and then every time that I move around, I'm just gonna press the shutter button on this little Bluetooth remote. So looking at the phone screen, it does look like I gave it 37 different photos, so that should be more than enough. I should be able to click done. And with the free version of Polycam, you have 25 free photo captures. So we're gonna end up using one of our free photo captures here. I'm gonna do dense, and we're gonna use the photogrammetry feature. And I also wanna check isolate object from the environment. And then we can hit upload and process. All right, so our scan with Polycam is all finished processing. And you can see right here, this doesn't look bad at all. It, wasn't able to capture some of the details in my hat, but even up above on the top of my head where I don't think it was actually capturing much, we didn't get a bad scan at all. So then I can come up to the top and hit the download button. Now with the free version, you are limited to a GLTF file, but we are able to convert that later on to either an object file or an STL. So we're gonna hit export and I'm just gonna airdrop this over to my computer. For this one, we're just gonna try the auto mode and see what it's able to do. So I've still got my shutter button here. I'm gonna press it and let it do its thing as I rotate around. So I'm looking through this secondary camera here so I can get an actual view of what the phone screen is capturing. And we'll just start spinning. So one of the problems that you may have noticed as you were watching that screen is it was only able to capture three photos. The video mode is not very good unless you're actually moving the phone around, which is why I always default to the photo mode. So I am gonna try that one more time, standing a little bit closer to the phone, but this time we're gonna go back to the photo mode. So I've captured another set of pictures. I'm moving about a three or four degree turn each time I take a picture, maybe a little bit more, but that's what it feels like anyways. And I'm doing that to give myself the best possible captures that I can with this app. Let's see what it looks like. So we gave ourselves 37 photos that time, same as last time. We can hit done, and we're gonna do a dense scan and object isolation. We will upload that one, have it process, and then we can compare the two results. All right, so you can see that second scan there. We've got a little bit of a uh, mushing together on my face. If you're looking at it from the front view, it doesn't look all that bad. Again, it wasn't able to capture that top portion of my hat just because of the angle that I was standing at. But overall, these aren't bad scans, aside from the fact that I looked like I'm very sad. So I'm gonna once again export as a GLTF file and airdrop that over to my computer. Now that we're all finished up using our iPhone and the Polycam app, we're gonna pull it off of this tripod and get the Miracle Plus 3D scanner set up. Now this tripod isn't anything special. In fact, I kind of hate it. 
this little knob here doesn't tend to stay very well, so I am going to be very careful when I'm putting the scanner on it. All right. See, it kind of wobbles itself around a little bit, so it can be a little difficult with this one. I would definitely recommend a higher quality tripod if you're doing something like this. And because the RevoPoint scanner has a flip up screen, I'm gonna do that so I can get myself positioned kind of in the right area. Now that I've got our secondary camera set up, I've got the scanner set up to do its thing in the continuous mode, since there is no Bluetooth or remote shutter button for it. We're just gonna let it roll and see what happens. I am just gonna hit continuous and start turning. And that's pretty much it with the continuous mode. You'll notice I went around one more time than I did with the Polycam app, just because I wanted to capture more of my hat. Now, this thing also has what they call a merge feature. So if I decided that my first scan was not 100% accurate or wasn't capturing some of the stuff that I wanted it to capture, I can go back in and do a secondary scan with this and merge the two together. But we'll see how this one looks first. So you can see we've captured a whole bunch of point clouds on here and I am just gonna tap on one tap edit. We're gonna go detailed, it'll take about five minutes. And when that is all finished up, we will come back and see what this one looks like. One thing I did wanna mention while this is doing its one tap edit is the reason I'm wearing my hat is, is I always wear a hat in the video. So I wanna be able to focus on getting the most accurate representation of what's actually gonna be standing in front of the camera. All right, so this initial mesh is all finished up. If we zoom in, we can see kind of what it captured. Again, the hat is something that it wasn't able to really capture 100%. We do have a spot on top of my head that wasn't exactly perfect. And again, there on the back of my head, that will be able to fix down the road. If we take a look at the actual mesh data though, we can see there's a little bit of detail that's lacking in this initial scan and we didn't capture underneath anything. So I think what I'm gonna do is go back into the scanner and do one more scan with it. So we can just start off with continuous and I'm gonna just angle down, try to maintain sort of this, this angle here. All right, and then I'm gonna hit done. This should have captured more of the top of my head. Once again, I'm gonna tap one, tap edit, and we're gonna do detailed. Okay, so in this one, you can see right on my eyes that I was staring up at the screen when I first started the scan. That is one of the things with the 3D scanner that's a little difficult to do if you're working by yourself, is making sure you're not looking in any weird directions because it will, uh, it will capture that. So for this one, because I was looking down, it really got some weird angles on my eyes. Still wasn't fully able to capture the top of my head. And if we take a look at the actual mesh itself, you can see underneath, obviously, the hat, we didn't capture anything. And if we compare it with our first scan, should have a little bit better results as far as on the hat. I guess what I'm gonna do is do one more scan looking up so it's able to capture underneath. All right, and I think I only need one of those. Combined with these three scans that we've taken, I should be able to get a pretty good representation of what this is gonna look like. So the next step would be to take the files we captured from both Polycam and the scanner and get them into the computer and do a little bit of post-processing on them. So now that we're back at the computer, we can open up RevoScan 5, which is going to be our uh, post-processing and editing app for the RevoPoint scanner. So we can click on new project and we're gonna call this one Logan Head Scan. Then we can go into our scanner itself and we have our file that we wanna share. So we're gonna do this over Wi-Fi, and I can go in here and go import from uh, Morocco, or Miraco, however it's said, we're gonna use Wi-Fi. Now it's gonna display a code on the screen that we enter that code here on the scanner, and this will immediately start sharing our scan files over onto their app. Looks like we captured about one and a half gigs of scan or mesh data, so not too bad. And the transfer is all complete, we can hit finish and shut off our scanner so the battery doesn't die. So now that we are in the computer, it'll open up all three of our mesh files that we captured. And if we want no color, we just wanna see what the actual mesh looks like, we can shut off the color there. And what I wanna do is merge these three files together. I need to do manual alignment because it's not quite sure where things need to be aligned. So I'm gonna select 
my eyes. And I will also select, uh, I guess, right down here. And then we'll do the same thing here. So we've got one, two, and three. And you can see what that did. It's now got our hat that's more properly aligned with our body. So then I can hit generate model. So now we've got our first merge here. This isn't looking bad at all. And you can see most of us, at least the parts that we are interested in anyways, pretty much there. The only spot we're lacking is underneath the head right here. So what I'm gonna try is combining our third scan. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the eyes. So one, two, and then three down there. And then one, two, and three down there. And then I'm gonna generate another merge. What I'd like to see is if any of these actually have the underside of the hat. So that looks like the one where I was staring up. And then this looks like the one where I was staring down. So these might be a two to try. All right, so I need to click there, there and there, 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 and there. Let's try that. So for whatever reason, even though we had an accurate capture underneath the hat, it wasn't able to collect that for one reason or another. What I'm gonna do now though is go into mesh and I'm gonna select our third mesh that we've taken. Does look like they missed out on the underside here. All right, so somehow going up a grid size actually seems like it's putting a little bit more detail in there. Let's see how this works though, just initially going right about from there. We'll take off the sides of the sweatshirt and get rid of anything that's not really part of the model itself. Then I'm gonna go to fill holes and we'll see what this is able to do. Select all and apply. All right, so all in all, it's a little bit creepy. And there are still a couple areas in there where, where it wasn't able to uh, get rid of those holes. But I think this should give us something to work with at least, and we'll see how that comes out. I'm gonna export this again as merge three, revision two. So that is all we need to do with inside of uh, RevoScan 5. I will preface this part with saying I'm not super familiar with this software yet. I've only played around with it a couple of times. Most of the stuff that I'm doing is from within the scanner itself, unless I need some super high detail like I wanted to capture uh, with this scan today. So some of the features I'm not too privy to, but over time, I'm sure I'll get better at it. Now for the scan that we did with Polycam on the iPhone, we have our GLF file, I believe it is, that we scanned. So what we need to do first is search for GLB to OBJ converter. And I'm just gonna use this one. I've used it before, image to stl.com. And we can basically tell it what, what we wanna convert it to. So from a GLB file to an OBJ file. And I'm gonna use the, our second scan here and just hit convert to OBJ. Don't click those download pop-ups, they're ads. So we will scale it. The first thing you'll notice is there are quite a few holes here. And look what it did to my face. Now, I don't know if that's because of the file conversion or if that's simply because of the scan data that we got. So what I'm gonna do is change these to white just because it'll make it easier to see. Speaking of seeing, yikes. So you will notice down here, it's showing 5,581 non-manifold edges. And those are gonna be the areas where we either have holes or there's an error within the model itself. Now the Computer I'm using is a MacBook Pro, so uh, we aren't able to fix this model within the slicer on Mac. Thankfully, I have Parallels Desktop on my computer, so I'm just gonna open this up, and then we can open up Orca Slicer once we are in Windows. If you're already on Windows, your app will allow you to do this. And hit Repair. So it's filled any holes that were in the, uh, the scan, so at this point, what I'm gonna do is right-click it and hit Export is one STL. We're gonna call this scan, and then we can drag it back over to Mac. This is our fixed model that we took from Windows. I'm gonna go through here and cut off some of the stuff that we don't actually need. 
And I'm also gonna open up a new plate and we can import our OBJ file from the Revel point. Now this one, I don't, I don't need any of the colors, but it's gonna import it anyways. I am just gonna attempt to set it down like that and rotate it a little bit. Maybe we can get it to fit on the bed a little bit better. So I am gonna get rid of all these other colors that it gave it. And we can change this to, I guess we'll use a brown, maybe a skin tone. And then we can scale this one up as well. So there you have it. Before we go to print, just a quick look. This is our Revo Point scan, and this is our scan from Polycam. Now, if you wanna see me play around with the paid version of Polycam, I don't think we're gonna get results that are a whole lot different, if I'm being quite honest with you, but I'm just gonna bring up uh, the screen recording from our phone just to show you what it actually looks like as a mesh file because this right here is what we've been looking at and what we've been seeing so far. But if I tap on this little icon right here, it's actually gonna show us what our mesh actually looks like. And if you tap it twice, you can see this is actually the level of detail that the scan was able to capture. So while it does look like that free converter did put a lot more uh, angles or what I'll call a low poly scan or low poly conversion, this is essentially what we've got from the Polycam app anyways. So there isn't a whole lot we're gonna be able to do with that. I'm gonna print both of them out though, just so we can see what the, what the two look like. But without even printing anything, I can already see that obviously the scan data we were able to capture from the Revo point is worlds beyond what the free version anyway of Polycam is able to do. And the whole purpose of this was to see if we could take a free app or at least the free version of an app and get equally as good results as we could from an almost $2,000 3D scanner. I think the results speak for themselves. Now, this is what I've landed on after going back and forth a few times. We're gonna leave it at this 0.25 millimeter layer height. We're gonna be in here for about 22 and a half hours. The reason I'm doing that is because it wanted to put some rough areas as far as the overhangs go up top here. And if I'm gonna spend 700-ish grams of filament in almost a full day, I wanna make sure this thing prints okay. So I'm gonna send this over to the P1P just because aside from using the GD Plus 4, it's the only printer I have, it's gonna allow me to print something this size. So we will get that sent over. This is gonna take a fair amount of time to send this over just because of how long of a print it is. While it's doing that though, we can go load some filament into the printer. Gray might give us a little bit more to see, but since I've got beige, I think we're gonna go with that beige from Elegoo. Can load it up into AMS slot four. This one, I am gonna use the frostbite plate from CryoGrip just cause I don't need any issues occurring while this thing is printing for the next day. And while the P1P is doing its thing, I'm just for the hell of it going to print out the model we scanned on Polycam over on the Adventure 5M from Flashforge. Now I'm able to do this because I'm not gonna print it out at full scale. We already know what it looks like based off of our results within the slicer. So I am gonna scale it down to fit on the bed of the 5M, but it should give us a pretty good representation of what each of them are gonna look like when they're fully 3D printed. Well, it's been uh, about 23 and a half hours since we last met, and our two results are done. Which one looks more like me? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm, I'm very surprised how this one actually came out. There's a few inconsistencies that just came from the overall scanning process. Uh, I think if I had spent a little bit more time touching some of these things up, we probably could have come out with something that was even more clean than what this one came out like, but it's uh, it's pretty uncanny to say the least. But yeah, very pleased with how this came out. There's a couple support pieces that I haven't taken off yet. Um, and aside from you know some of the areas on the top of the hat, like we saw in the scan data, this came out creepy. All right, folks. I will see you all in the next video. Thanks so much for sticking with me and joining me on this little adventure, 3D scanning my face. If you're interested in seeing more 3D scanning content and leave me a comment down below, letting me know what you wanna see. And if you wanna pick up one of the Revo Point scanners, links are down in the description below. Catch you next time, folks. See ya.